Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Ashley and I'm coming to you live from my closet. And today I am here to talk about the 2016 BET Awards. So I did write down some notes and I also have my trusty iPad here and I'm going to be reacting to some of the clips that I see here posted on the BET app. So let's get into it. Of course, let's talk about the performances. The show opened up with no other than Beyonce. And I actually had to watch the show live from my phone through the BET app because I was at my boyfriend's house this weekend and he doesn't believe in cable. So I pretty much didn't start watching the show until almost an hour into it because we live out here in Phoenix, Arizona and we're on the same time zone as California but me being from Atlanta I'm used to being on East Coast time so I don't know why for some reason I just figured that it was going to start around 7 but I forgot that we're on the same time as California and they have to make sure they start early enough so people on the East Coast won't fall asleep and I watch the show. So, um, well, Beyonce opened the show, of course, and her performance was everything. I didn't even know that there was speculation that she was going to be there, but I did see where the Formation Girls came out on the red carpet, walking in formation, beautiful gowns and custom made outfits and garments just you could tell everything they just looks so regal. Their presence, they don't say anything, they just walk. A fierce catwalk but a walk with pride you know kind of like the African motherland walk they be having and just when you saw them come you already knew Beyonce was in the building and I love how she does that you don't even have to tell nobody you come you just I'm gonna let my girls walk through and they're gonna let y'all know that I'm here because we in formation so everybody need to get in formation because I'm here to shut it down and of course she did open the show with freedom she looked gorgeous. Her leotard hard with everything. Again, just custom couture. I don't know if Miss Tina made it. I don't know if somebody else made it. But everything that she rocks, it's not something that you can see or buy in the store. But I loved her leotard. She had the fringes coming down. So it was, ooh, it was giving me everything. Her braids. She brought back the braids from like 98, 99, early 2000s, Beyonce back in Destiny's Child. I was like, okay, girl, I'll see you. So she had the braids, you know, very tribal the dancers came out walking through the crowd very tribal tribal paint just looking gorgeous and i love how she celebrates women and also how she celebrates the women the woman body um just because their outfits even with them coming out in the crowd it looks very like i said motherland just who you are come as you are adam and eve type of naked vibe but done in a very tasteful way and i really appreciated that beyonce never disappoints i don't care what anybody says this woman is the closest thing that we have to michael jackson outside of chris brown and um i think that where she's at a, at this point in her life um I know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about how she's just now speaking up and saying things. But I, when I hear people say that, I don't really know if they know the history of Beyonce. Me, myself, I'm a Destiny's Child fan. I don't call myself a Beyonce fan. I am a Destiny's Child fan. So I'm a fan of every single person out of the group. You know, even Farrah. I even give it to her because she was in the group. We're going to let you have that one, girl. But, so I've been watching them since the beginning. I had to be about nine years old when Destiny Child first came out, fourth grade. So I always loved their music. They from the South. I'm from the South. So, you know, the way that they sang was very reminiscent of what I would hear in church, you know. Um, so I always love them. And if you don't know, I mean, even from the second album, Bills, 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 Bugaboo, she always has been about being powerful, independent women, survivor, bootylicious, celebrating her body. And she's able to show different sides of herself. She's always been very powerful, very independent. You can tell she gets a lot of that from her mother, a lot of that from her father as well. But she's also shown that, hey, I'm a woman and I fall in love too. Things happen as she showed us with the Lemonade album. But I don't know. To me, Beyonce has always been that person. She just hasn't been as political as people would like her to be. But at the same time, I mean, her being so close with the Obamas, that was really, for me, showing that, okay, she really is involved in everything. She really does care about 
the world. I mean, we all live here. We're all Americans. So she cares about everything just as much as everyone else does. But I think right now it's just more of a militant stance in a good way because, you know, they try to make militant mean something else. But anyways, I'm going to get off of that. But she just did wonderful. The performance was everything. The water, the dramatics, the dancers. She had the male dancers back there. Of course, her formation girls and the Kendall Lamar popped up doing his thing. She was all into it. They were in sync with each other. They started kicking the water together. And then at the end, she just, freedom, freedom. Where are you? Because we need freedom too. And I think that just set the tone for the whole show. So... Big ups to Beyonce. She had to leave right after that to go to her concert. But I'm not mad about it because she ain't been to the BET Awards in a long time. And I really would like to know what they did to get her here because I think after they had a little incident on One of and Park when Karuchi made that comment about Blue Ivy's hair. Yeah, Beyonce and Jay were pretty much cool on BET like that for a little bit. They still showed a little bit of love. You know, she let them use the video, but she was, no, I'm not coming. Y'all have to apologize to me in blue. For that comment and i can understand that but I, it was good to see her there i was glad that she opened the show it just set the tone it really just set the tone for an amazing night and amazing show so the next performance we're going to talk about we're going to lump these two in together future and designer um let me just say this as somebody who has lived in the atlanta area since high school went to college there grad school everything so i was pretty much you know around and out in the streets and the clubs and everything in college when future was First coming up in Atlanta before everybody else knew about him came up under Rocco uh, but he has ties to the dungeon family which is tied to outcast you know very prestigious in the hip-hop community Atlanta thing you know what I'm saying Rocco is really big in Atlanta always you know that type of guy so um his style of rapping has definitely changed a little bit and I know when designer came out with this song everybody was saying that he sounded it sounded like a future song And I'm not going to lie to you. It sounds like a future song, but everything out kind of sounds like a future song I think this was really a testament to show everybody that everybody's music a lot of it sounds the same Not everybody but a lot of it does sound the same and you notice that even now I hear new songs come out and I'm just thinking, okay, this sounds like a DJ Mustard song or this sounds like a Mike Will Made a song. It just, you know, hey. But I will say when I have heard or seen interviews with Designer and heard him speak, him, him and Future really have a similar voice. Their, um, their voice is very similar as far as their speaking voice. So it's kind of like the raspy, kind of like I just woke up type of vibe, type of voice. But... I think, yeah, he, he does sound like Future. This song really does sound like Future. But again, like I said, I even think Future, the, the sound today is more like Future mixed with Migos, with a little auto-tune, Lil Wayne. That's what everybody sounds like. So I don't really think that, I don't know if Future is mad about it, but I don't really feel like he has any room to be mad about it because all y'all sound the same. And y'all all make good music. You know, it's cool. Hey, I think everybody feeds off of everybody. But if we're going to talk about these performances, designer took that one home he had a lot of energy a lot of energy and he's a great performer honestly because of again the energy and the passion he has a lot of passion and energy when he performs and i think that's what you need to have a good performance he had the crowd hype everybody was up you know what i'm saying and i feel like you know, even if it was a whack song, he would have still performed that same way. So I can appreciate that with Designer. Future performed Wicked, you know what I'm saying? And the song could just get you crunk. He don't really have to do much because his performance wasn't really, I wouldn't feel like, I don't feel like it was as energetic as Designer. No, definitely not. But the song, I mean, it does it for itself. And of course, you know, Esco in the back, his DJ hyping it up. And Esco has a lot of energy too. So I think he should just let him come on the floor, leave the turntables. You come out here with me and get the crowd hype because I I think he's really good at doing that but I mean it was good for what it was you know what I'm saying I can't I can't hate on the performance because the song is hot all right so let's talk about Usher um he performed the song that he has with Young Thug and I think it's No Limit and the song is hot to be all the way real with you I really like the song the song is popping what I will say is I don't think the song is really for Usher I liked it better for him before I saw him perform it. You know what I mean? Um, Usher, I think, I know he has some surgery on his leg or his foot because his last two years of performances that I've seen, he does not dance like how he used to. So, honestly, I think something seriously happened. He really had an injury that's 
I don't know, it's, it's kind of, it's keeping him from performing to his full out potential that I've normally seen him since growing up. Usher is an amazing performer, an amazing dancer, an amazing singer. But um, it just wasn't, I don't know, this performance, it was something missing from him. The performance itself, as far as the dancers, the song was good, you know, Thug was out there. All of that was fine, but it was just missing that little spark from him that he usually has that for some reason he doesn't, I don't know. And I think it's because of the injury that he had with his foot. So, you know, it was what it was. I like the song. It was cute. I like how he had the kids out there. Usher seems to really embrace the youth a lot. So that's, that's good. I love to see that. Um, little, okay. Bryson Tiller. I love Bryson Tiller. He's one of those people that I feel like I discovered. You know, I was listening to him before he got real mainstream when he just had the SoundCloud popping. And I love his music. He's very honest. And I think that's what people like about him. He's not trying to do the most. He's just trying to make music and speak from his heart. And I can appreciate that. We need more people like that. Not about the gimmicks, but just about the art. And he definitely had a backtrack playing. So I was kind of unsure if he was lip singing or not, but I think he was probably nervous. I, I honestly think Bryson just needs to sit on a stool with the mic in front of him and just sing. He don't need to do nothing else. I don't feel like he needs to get up. Like maybe when he gets like his little crunk part, when he not really having to sing, he doing like the rapping part when he raps. Okay, get up. But when he's just singing, I think he should just sit on a stool with the mic in front of him and just let it be because his music it just creates a vibe that he don't have to do too much. He just needs to let the vibe go and let everybody feel it. So big ups to him. And I thought the performance was pretty good, you know, for his first performance of the BET Awards. He probably will get a lot better. So next we have Remy Ma, Fat Joe, all the way up. So the song is popping. The song is hot. It's good to see them two back out there again. Remy Ma was looking gorgeous in that dress. She's just wonderful. Fat Joe was popping. French Montana was out there doing his thing. And it was a good performance, you know. They're vets in the game, so I don't expect anything less than a good performance from them. And it's good to see Remy out here doing her thing because we need more female rappers. Alicia Keys. Okay, let me just... Let me take a sip of water before I talk about Alicia Keys. <sighs> um, I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I get the vibe. I don't know if it was just, you know, like kind of a tribute to Prince by having all of the instruments out there. Um... She's definitely on this whole no makeup thing that has nothing to do with the performance. And she's beautiful, so she can go without makeup. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing. That's neither here nor there. Her music, to me, is not the same as it used to be. Which, I don't expect anybody's music to stay the same. You're supposed to evolve over time. You're going to talk about different things because you have different life experiences. And if you write your own music and you're writing honestly from the heart, your music is not always going to be the same because life is never the same. However, comma... I will say that it just seems like she's not connected. And somebody said something. They said it feels like her music is kind of lazy. And um, I can kind of agree with that. I feel like, I don't know if she's trying to be gimmicky in her music or I don't know. And I'm not the hugest Alicia Keys fan, but Alicia Keys makes... Her first few albums were popping. She has some great music that came out. I will say the vibe that I always got from her is like, sometimes it seems like she's trying too hard, if that makes sense. Even when she first came out, she used to always come and be like, you know, my beautiful black people and blah, blah, blah. It just didn't seem authentic, you know? And I think that she gets a lot of hype behind her and her music to me has not lived up to all of the hype that she has gotten. Um, and I think it's just due to the backing that she has. I mean, she was signed to J Records. I don't know if she's still signed to them, but Clive Davis had her back. So, of course, she got a lot of media push and all of that early on in her career. And I just think that she not living up to that hype that she got back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And it's just amazing to see that's how the music industry works. Because you have somebody like Erica Badu, who I feel like consistently puts out good, heartfelt, truthful type of music. Or Jill Scott. Or Marsha Ambrosius, who is a genius to me. And they don't get the same backing that Alicia Keys does. 
I, you know, her even performing on this award show, she don't even have, like, no music out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like they could have let somebody else perform over Alicia Keys. Honestly, and with, honestly, with Beyonce and Remy Ma being the only women who performed outside of the women who performed for the tri the Prince tribute, I feel like they could have took Alicia Keys off of there and they could have put another woman singing up there. They could have put Seven Streeter, Alicia Card, whatever that girl's name. They could put Kalani up there. You know what I'm saying? Like, or Fifth Harmony, shit. I just feel like I don't understand why she was performing because she doesn't have any music out that's popping right now. I don't feel like she deserved to perform. That's just how I feel. And then she kind of let me down with that because nobody knew the song. And it didn't sound like a bad song, you know what I'm saying? Alicia Keys is talented. I just, again, I just feel like she gets a lot of push because of the mainstream people that she know or the connections that Clive Davis had. I, I really, I just think that's what it is. But anyways, so I wasn't really feeling her performance. I mean, she looked great. She did what she did. It just wasn't connecting with me, you know, sorry. Maxwell... I know the first song that he performed was one of his new songs, and then he also did a song for Prince. And, I mean, it's Maxwell. You can't really go wrong with Maxwell. He always sounds awesome. His voice sounds beautiful. He's never off. I don't know. He just gives you a vibe. And you, got, you can't deny. You can't deny the vibe that Maxwell gives. And he looks great. He looks awesome. All right, so the music matters. That was great. I love when they do this. And I noticed that this year, they let the performers perform longer than 30 seconds. And I appreciate that. <laughs> they actually let them do a full song, which was amazing to me to hear this new talent. The first girl that they had, I cannot remember what her name was. I'm sorry, but her voice was gorgeous. She did a really good song. I know that she's written for a lot of people. Rihanna is one of the people that she's written for. So I could see her doing some things, going a lot of places. She has a very mainstream appeal too, but a lot of soul in her. And I appreciate that. So we also had Anderson Pack, and he came out there. Let me tell you something. He had the crowd like, okay, like we don't know you like that. We don't know your song, you know, but you got us. And you can tell he's kind of an underground artist that's coming up. He was actually on the Double XL freshman class. So he's he's one of those people, along with Designer, was on there too. But he's coming up and he has, I love the musicianship. I love the instruments. I love that he plays instruments and he sings and he does all of these things. He got the background. It's like it's a group, you know what I'm saying? Kind of gives you a Prince vibe. Like, it's not just about me. It's about the people who play the drums, the people who play the guitar, my background singers, whoever, doing a tambourine. It's a whole band. And I love that people are doing that. And I wish we can get back to that more, like, back in the day. But he was popping, and I saw, like, the internet. They were out there jumping up to his music. You see, you know, different people who have kind of an eclectic, different type of genre. They all were in there like, okay, yeah, this this my dude right here. So he did really, really, really well in his band. It was awesome. And next we have Beyonce's group. I think it's Chloe and Hallie. Hallie and Chloe. Those little girls are a force to be reckoned with because their performance their vocals, their stage presence, the passion that you see that they have as they perform. And these girls are young. So I can imagine what they're going to be when they get older. It's very reminiscent to how Beyonce was when she was younger. When she performed, she was always the one that kind of stood out or she just performed the hardest. And I think she that's what made Destiny's Child such a great group because they all fed off of each other. And Beyonce was always on her shit. So I think she sees something special in them. But those girls, that song was beautiful. The one girl was rap. She got her little thing. It was great. The other girl played the guitar. It was wonderful. So I really love the Music Matters moments of the show. And I love to just see new talent and see that we are still evolving. And honestly, I love when they have these people perform because they are, they're still wanting that shot. And it really kind of makes the people who are doing good kind of, okay, let me set my game up. And I just, I love it. I love to see people play instruments. And I think that's wonderful. So next, let's talk about the Prince tribute. The first part was Erica Badu, The Roots and Bilal. All the wonderful Erica Badu, you can't deny her. She's just, again, somebody who brings you good energy and you just feel it. Everything that she does, she has a lot of soul and a lot of passion. The Roots, musicians who 
always show up and show out and put on a good show and Bilal came out there and when he did the beautiful ones now let me tell you the beautiful ones is my favorite song from Prince ever that song makes me feel like I'm in love with the song like the song is my boyfriend and it's like I can be by myself and I'm just vibing out it's just everything so he came and he did that song justice he got on the ground like prince opened that shirt up rolled around said do you want him or do you want me because i want you and i appreciated that so it was awesome also they had tori kelly and stevie wonder and i love tori kelly's voice love stevie wonder he's a legend tori kelly looked really good in her little purple pants i was like okay girl i love it i don't think that them two performing together really meshed well honestly and you could just tell they were kind of off but i love how tori kelly kind of let him take the lead and she, you know it was really like she was showing her respect to her elder because she really just could have went out there and blowed and just been doing all types of stuff because that girl can sing but she was really trying to just follow his lead and and trying to get it together but um it was a little off it was a little off but it wasn't horrible i don't know so also we had Janelle Monet. She went out there and tore the stage down. She is a protege of Prince and you can tell that he influences a lot of everything that she does. And again, that's why he's the greatest. That's why they paid a tribute to him because he's one of the greatest musicians ever. And she just, she showed her ass, literally. She actually had the pants on that showed her ass. But she did so good. And at the end when she was crying, you could tell that she just felt like that was probably gonna be one of the best moments of her life i don't think she will ever forget that moment and she did him justice and i'm pretty sure he's very 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 proud of her and the last prince tribute and this actually closed out the show was sheila e miss sheila e she there's not many like her like prince there's not many like her she can sing, she can dance, she's a great performer, she plays instruments, she gives her all every time she's out there. And she's been doing this for a very, 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 very long time. And I wish that more women knew about people and performers like Sheila E. Because, I mean, this day and age, it's just difficult to be a, a young woman and try to stick to your morals or do things a certain way because ugh, the things that are put out there is not you should be you know more like somebody like Sheila E it's more like you should be like a you know Instagram model or you should try to come up be a stripper whatever I mean everybody has their own path but I just wish more people knew about her and I hope that this performance makes a lot of young people research her and other people like her and our artists that came before you know our time artists that were there during our parents time our grandparents time she's one of those performers who gives her all every time and like i said she's been doing this for years her family has been doing this for a very long time she was brought up in the industry even before she met prince she was already performing that's how he found her so she just i really think she did him justice and i know that he was looking down from heaven smiling on her my say prince's ex-wife who was a dancer for him on his tours and everything. She also was out there performing with Sheila E dancing. And I just felt like I got tears in my eyes during that part. That part really, really, really touched me um, because I know that Maite actually, they had a, a miscarriage when they were married. So she would have had Prince's only child, you know? Um, so I know it had to be a lot for her, but for them to come together and do that, I just think that it's wonderful. I saw on my taste Instagram that Sheila E actually asked her to come. And I just thought that was really big and great of Sheila E to do that because she knows how much, you know, they meant to each other. So that was great. I love to see that. I think the whole Prince tribute, when they said they got us, they really got us. They really did everything that they could to make sure that they did him justice and that, you know, his life... And the music that he's contributed to the world that it was praised and I, I think that they did a great job and i love them for that so the prince tribute was everything that i could have wanted i know people were saying d'angelo was supposed to be there i wish i, I wish he would have showed up also i thought miguel would have been great to perform too but you know either way it goes there's probably so many other people who could have been a part of the tribute but 
those who were there did a great job and I'm thankful to BET for making it an importance to do that and to make sure that he was celebrated the way that he needed to be celebrated. So also Samuel L. Jackson got the Lifetime Achievement Award and Spike Lee presented it to him and I am a big Spike Lee fan so I've been watching his movies since I was young when I probably wasn't supposed to be watching some of them. But yeah, Samuel L. Jackson was always a big figure in his early movies and you never really realize how much he has done. I didn't realize how much he has done. Like I know Samuel L. Jackson has done a lot, but when you really think about it, it's just amazing to see how he's been able to stand the test of time in this industry. And he's very professional. You never heard about him being in no scandal. You know what I'm saying? He's married to his wife. He just kind of do his thing. And I just, I think it's wonderful to see stuff like that. And I think that, you know, it was a long time coming. I'm pretty sure he has plenty more to do. And I think he's in some movies now that are coming out. And he's just been consistently, consistently working and consistently putting out good work and real work. Like, everything he does, it just feels real. So, big ups to Samuel L. Jackson and being in the game, the song, and being a role model to those. And keep on pushing. I really, really love that. Now, the highlight of the show to me outside of Beyonce and Bryson Tiller was the speech that Jesse Williams got as he received the Humanitarian Award. And uh, I gotta take my glasses off again. Oh, Lord. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Okay, I think I might keep my glasses off for this segment. I really appreciate the fact when celebrities, artists, whoever, take the time to acknowledge what's going on in the world when they have the platform. He's been doing a lot of great work, and I didn't even know about everything that he was doing until I saw this, and definitely I'm, I'm interested in it and want to see how I can become involved. But his speech really just touched on everything because sometimes people try to be politically correct, even black people they try to, and they try to say, well, you know, we got to stop the violence against each other and all that, you know what I'm saying, which is true. However, that's not the issue that's at hand, you know what I'm saying? Because when Ray Ray and Daquan start beefing and Daquan shoot Ray Ray, Daquan's going to jail for life, rightfully so. He should. He took a life. But when a police officer who is trained to de-escalate situations in a way that violence isn't a result of it, but they are still out here killing innocent black people, and not even, we're not going to say innocent, but they're killing black people when they could refrain from it, okay? And a lot of times it is innocent. I just think that for him to come out and speak about it in the way that he did, and he just broke it down. Like, we've done the research. Police officers are able to de-escalate situations with white people every day without shooting somebody. Every day they're able to do that. And I think that's what people don't realize. This has nothing to do with crime, with black-on-black -black crime, or anything like this. This is purely racism racism and i think that there are a lot of police officers out there who may not be racist but they know if i shoot this black kid i can get away with it way more than i could if i shot a white kid you know what i'm saying so that mentality and you put that with somebody who's racist who, and you give them a license to kill, basically, as a police officer, there's an issue with that. And I love the fact that he touched on that. He really, I'm like, you know, he is reminiscent of somebody from the 60s. He has a very Malcolm X vibe. You know, Harry Belafonte wants to, he really wants to do some good for the people. And I really appreciate that. Everything he said, it just, I was just like, right, exactly. Yes, because that's all I be saying every day is, I mean, it just don't make sense. So he also talked about conditional freedom. And I think that's the biggest thing that we face as black people. Conditional freedom. We're free, but it's under conditions. We're free as long as we don't make people scared or make people feel uncomfortable. We're free as long as we don't have ghetto names. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
quote unquote ghetto. Um, we're free as long as we walk on the right side of the road. You know what I'm saying? We don't have the same freedoms as everyone else. We don't. When we go into a room, we're judged automatically based off of the way that we look. And more harshly than anyone else in this country. So I just, he's very woke. <laughs> Stay woke. And I really hope that he continues to move up that ladder. And one day maybe we can see him as our president. I could see him doing that, you know. And I just, he really inspired me. And I feel like he inspired a lot of people in the audience and those who are watching. And it was good to see that. And it makes me feel like, Again, like he said, we just have a lot of work to do. We got to stand up for ourselves and we got to make sure that people know that we're not taking this anymore, okay? And I'm not taking it anymore. And Jesse, oh my gosh, he's so fine. It's just like you fine and you woke. You know what I'm saying? And what he said about black women, how we take care of everybody before ourselves. And he has a white mother. So it's amazing to me that a man with a white mother seems to have more knowledge and respect for and love for black women than a lot of these negroes out here that have black mamas i just it again i think he just gave everybody something to think about and i think that we all need to strive and move towards that you know even just with the mindset or just providing education and people you know everybody's not gonna be out there on the front lines but just being able to say hey i'm gonna stand up for what's right and i'm gonna speak up about it when the time comes and i just love that he took this platform he could have talked about himself but he really just wanted to to give a message and i think that's that's all we can all do is at least give a message and put you know some inspiration into somebody else and you know light that flame because i'm lit right now thank you jesse Okay, so um, there are a lot of people at the BT Awards. In the audience, you had Jermaine Dupri with his red sequin bomber jacket. It was very flashy, very flashy. It stood out um, a lot. You know, I don't know how I feel about it, but it stood out. So big ups to him. Two chains. He had like the beehive or the halo thing going on with his with his dreads. You know, he got a lot of hair and whatnot. But I see him. You know, maybe he said it's too hot. I'm a put my hair up because it is hot out here on the west coast so i can understand that so i'm not i'm not mad at him for that okay he did his thing so let's talk about some of the awards we had best group was drake and future um like this kind of didn't make sense to me and i know with a lot of these award shows they don't really care about the awards as much as they care about the performances and whatever other special sequences and segments that they're doing but it was just okay i get it like they had the hottest mixtape i don't know i think they should have won for best collaboration and not best group there were there were some groups in there i think the only groups were ray shrimmer and the internet shit i think ray shrimmer probably should have got it but you know hey it is what it is um best male r&b bryson tiller well deserved he has shut this thing down he bought that r&b back you know made it mainstream and i like the way that he mixed it with hip-hop and it's called trap soul and yeah i think he deserved it he is really one of the most honest artists out there right now from our generation somebody who's young in their 20s and not just talking about bitches and hoes every day not saying that he don't say because there are bitches and hoes out there but he's not afraid to say i love you you know what i'm saying and i think that's why a lot of people like him and i think that's why a lot of dudes like him because he's saying what they're afraid to say also, best actor, Michael B. Jordan, with his beautiful bronze brown body and everything. He deserved that because Creed was awesome. I think I cried in that movie. Mm -hmm. Best actress, Taraji P. Henson. I think she was well-deserved of this, too. And I know some people were saying, oh, well, you know, she only got that because of Empire. And there are other actresses out there who are better but I think you fail to realize that Taraji P. Henson is a wonderful actress. She has a lot of range. But, you know what I'm saying? For her to carry a mainstream show, that's that's a big deal in itself. And I think, again, we need to just give praise and stop hating. Like, it's Taraji's moment. She deserves it. Because she's been serving since baby boy and when she used to be on Smart Guy. So, I'm very, very, very happy for Taraji. And I think she earned that. And let's see, we have best sportsman, sportswoman, Serena Williams. Of course, she's she's held it down for years. And Steph Curry. Yeah, Steph Curry did deserve that. I know some people were saying, 
Um, well, LeBron should have got it because he won the championship. No. Steph Curry was the MVP. He deserved it. I'm sorry. And if we're going to talk about the game in the finals, I was going for the Warriors. And I feel like, you know, only reason why LeBron and them won is because Steph Curry, some of his shots were not connecting. But that was a very good game, that last game. So it could have went to anybody. But he did deserve that award. Best new artist, again, Bryson Tiller. He he shut it down. There was some other people on there who were good. I think Alicia Cara, Alicia Cara was on there. And I think she's really wonderful, too. Um, but Bryson Tiller, he deserved it. I'm sorry, unanimously, he deserved that award. Video of the year, of course, Beyonce Formation. There was no other video on there that was touching hers. I think they had, who else was on there? Um... Rihanna Drake work, Drake Hotline Bling. I like the Drake Hotline Bling video. Was Kanye on there for something? I don't know, but I just know Beyonce definitely, I mean, she won that award, hands down. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And best hip-hop artist, Drake, rightfully so. And, you know, he was amongst the greats. Kendrick, J. Cole, Kanye, I think Future was on there as well. And, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Was Fetty Wap on there as well? I don't know. But, yeah, Drake, he had an amazing year. And, I mean, he, the way he killed Meek Mill, he just deserved it just off of that. So, I thought it was great. And best gospel, Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin went up there and gave a heartfelt speech. I've been listening to Kirk Franklin since I was little. And I really love how he doesn't act like he can't interact with hip-hop artists or R&B singers. He's always been very open to that. And that just shows to me, honestly, how real he is. So I thought it was great. And the Viewer's Choice Award, I believe that also went to Beyonce. I believe so. And um, Mama Tina went up there with her jumpsuit on, looking good. Had the girls all out, trying to show you I don't matter how old you are, you can still stretch your stuff. And I was loving it. And one thing she said was, give your people, your entertainers, those who work so hard to give us great art, give them their flowers while they're here. Let them smell the flowers while they're here. And I think that was a good lesson, especially with the Prince tribute. You know, we, we never know. You just never know. Life is too, it's short sometimes. You know, just, it could be gone in the blink of an eye and every day that you wake up is a major blessing. So what Miss Tina said, yes, that was real. And we should all appreciate each other, love each other, and you know, let each other know that you matter, you're important, and um, just show love instead of hate, you know, because you don't want to regret it at the end. So, the awards, it was awesome. I did watch the post show, and that was hilarious because poor Tinashe, girl, poor Tinashe, she was really trying her best to stay on script and do what she was supposed to do, but DJ Khaled was not, he was not letting it happen. He, I'm going to need y'all not to have him up there the whole time. Like, let Tinashe do her job. But other than that, the BET Awards was great. I didn't watch it last year, and I don't remember why I didn't watch it. I don't even know what I was doing. I don't think I was interested in watching it, but this year I definitely knew that I wanted to see it to see how they were going to do the Prince tribute, and they didn't disappoint having Beyonce open the show was also just they just kicked the door in and just let everybody know okay they really are on top of this shit they really got us this year so I love the show the show was great guys let me know what you think if you have any questions or anything that you need to say put it down below in the comments please like and subscribe to this channel I'm going to be putting up a lot more from my closet so let me know if there's anything you guys want to see or if there's anything that I left out from the show put it below I know I didn't get to see every little piece of it because I was watching on my phone so if there was something that I missed that was vital to the show leave it down below in the comment section thank you guys so much for watching and guys be blessed have a great day